I don't want our friends here who are listening in to be distracted in a conversation by thinking about the end game, which is leading someone to Christ. Just completely forget about that for a moment. That will take care of itself if you do these steps properly. One of the tactics you're possibly the most famous for is a tactic called the Columbo tactic. And there's sort of three <laughs> phases to this uh, to this tactic. So let's start with the first one. Uh, first of all, tell us about the Columbo tactic. What is it? And then what's that first phase about that you, you describe in your book as getting into the driver's seat? Right, right. Um, I'm not sure the, the uh, demographic of your listeners, but some of the younger ones may not be familiar with Lieutenant Columbo, but he is the number one TV icon of all time, according to one characterization. He even beat Lucy out. And wow. some of your listeners are saying, who's Lucy? All right. <laughs> um, but in any event, probably four decades ago now, you've got this TV show with Peter Falk, the actor, playing uh, a detective, a murder detective named Columbo. Lieutenant Columbo. And he would show up on the crime scene and he's got an old rumpled trench coat. He's got a stub of a cigar. He's walking around scratching his head, muttering himself to himself. And this guy, you know, he doesn't look like he's very smart. He looks stupid, but he's stupid like a fox because he's got a little technique that he comes in under the radar without ruffling feathers. And he'll scratch his head and say, you know, there's something about this thing that bothers me, you know, in his own way. Do you mind if I ask you a question? And then there he goes. And he gets a little bit of information. Ah, you're very intelligent. Hey, one more thing, you know, and he one more tings him to death with question after question after question. And the, the idea here is that technique turns out to be the absolutely hands down best way for any Christian to navigate in a conversation. It is also the safest way to navigate in a conversation for a number of reasons. I just gave a podcast on that recently. There's a lot of reasons why it's a safe thing to do to use questions, but it eases you into the conversation. Okay. And it, it, um, and put in ironically, the person who asks the questions is not the person who's doing most of the talking, obviously, but it's the person who's in the driver's seat of the conversation. Right. And this is where you want to be. We've all had experiences with conversations with other people where we're feeling we're off balance. OK, that's because they're driving and they're driving us someplace we don't want to go or we don't. Maybe we're not prepared to, to go or to deal with. OK, but if we are using questions, that means we are driving the conver conversation. You're doing it right now. Look at you. You're sitting there calm and relaxed. I'm doing all the work. <laughs> all right. But I'm going in the direction that you want me to go because of the questions that you have planned for this interview. OK, it's a perfect illustration. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the person who asked the questions is in the driver's seat. And that's the key to the tactical game plan in general is you want to stay in the driver's seat of the conversation. It doesn't mean we're manipulating people. It doesn't mean we're forcing them in an uncomfortable way to do something they don't want to do. Uh, we're not controlling them. Well, we're just we're just in in we are just using questions, the Colombo tactic, um, to direct our conversation. <clears throat> Excuse me. And by the way, the, the, this tactic, which is the core of the game plan, okay, all the other tactics serve it. So whenever we use any other tactic, like suicide or taking the roof off or just the facts, ma'am, or whatever, we are going to be employing questions even in using them. So the two tactics are working together. That's why this one is the most important because it is the game plan. And what questions will do is get you into the driver's seat in a relaxed way where there's no pressure on you. Just think of it. The pressure on the Christian is when the Christian's has to defend a view. Right. But if a Christian isn't advancing a view, but at least initially is just asking questions, no pressure. Okay. So <clears throat> there's a lot of value to that, but I just want to be brief. The first stage of that questioning process, that would be the first stage of the game plan. And there are three steps to the game plan. Easy to remember. The very first step of the game plan I'm going to say in just a moment, but I want people to keep in mind what I mean by the game plan. If a person uh, like a sports, a football player is going to play in the Super Bowl, right? 
when he's in the before he goes on the field, they're working out their plays. They're figuring out how they're going to do their stuff. They're doing their their advanced stuff, just like you mentioned yourself before you went on Briarly's uh, um, Justin Briarly's program. All right, but when you get in the game, you're not worrying about what happens at the end. You're worrying about what you're doing right then. And if you do the steps in each play properly, the end kind of takes care of itself. So I don't want our friends here who are listening in to be distracted in a conversation by thinking about the end game, which is leading someone to Christ. Just completely forget about that for a moment. That will take care of itself if you do these steps properly. God's in charge of that part. What's the first step? The first step is just to gather information. That's all you have to do when you enter into a conversation that you are, are hopeful will have a spiritual impact, <clears throat> whether it's with a stranger, with a friend. The first thing you must do is get a lay of the land, and you get that by asking information questions. The classic one, and the one I promote in the book, is some form of the question, what do you mean by that? And just to go back to your earlier conversation on Justin Briarley's show, when you're talking with a progressive Christian, uh, this is especially important because a lot of the language they use is the same, but the meanings yes. are different. Exactly. And, uh, and, 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 and so in this situation, plus virtually every situation, people use Christian language. You want to know their definite? What do you, what do you mean by that? When you say the Bible's inspired Exactly. Do you mean the same thing I mean, or do we mean different things? We're not arguing now who's right. We are just trying to get clear on the differences. That's all we're doing. This is getting the lay of the land. If you're dealing with a non-Christian and he said, well, everything's relative. Oh, now what? I'll tell you what. You ask a question. What do you mean by relative? Then let him answer and clarify what he means before you have to take on any further responsibility. Simply put, you want to try to gather as much information about the other person's view as possible before you ever think about going any further. And I'll give you a tip about this, and I'm sure this is something you've learned yourself in using this. And then I'll give you a chance to talk a little bit. <laughs> This is great. <laughs> and, and that is just asking the question, what do you mean by that? Which requires of the other person that they clarify their view. Just asking that question has can have a salutary impact on them. A lot of times they don't even know what to say. Right. You get silence, right? Yeah. But if you force them to think about their own view – Sometimes they realize their view isn't as good as they thought it was because now they're forced to articulate it in a clear fashion. Not They come to this realization not because I've refuted their view, but because I've just asked them to clarify their own view. So this first step, gathering information, getting the lay of the land before you decide where you're going to go next. You don't know where you're going to go next until you get some intel, so to speak. And maybe you don't go anywhere next. I don't think every interaction is a divinely uh, ordained appointment or something. Some people do, but I don't. I think sometimes there are ships passing in the night. You ask a few questions, nothing happens, and you just let it go. It's okay. God knows. It's relaxed. And uh, But if you do get more information, now you might have an idea what, not, what next question you can ask to move the conversation forward. Mm -hmm. 